So now we know how exactly your Spring Boot helps you with the dependency injection. But now let's add one more layer. So there's a concept called auto wiring. And in this video, let's try to focus on auto wiring with the help of one more layer. Target for this video is 250 comments. Now, which layer I'm talking about? Now, just for example, let's say when you talk about developers, of course, as a developer, I need a machine to work with. It can be a laptop, desktop, doesn't matter. I just want a machine to work with. So what I can do is I can work on the awesome project, but while doing that, maybe I also want to uh, compile the code. So maybe I want to call a method called compile. Uh, maybe I want to call the method uh, debug. So we got all these methods to work with. And of course, I can't do this in my mind. We do that when you want to do a dry compilation, but technically, if you want to really build a project, you need to uh, have a machine where you can compile and debug. So if, in order to call these methods, I need a class where I can define this. And that class is your laptop class. So let me create a class here and time in I will just close this and let's create a new class. So here I will create a class called a laptop. Okay. And then in this laptop class, basically I'll be having method like public void uh, compile. Of course, you need a compiler in your machine to compile, compile something. But let's say if I have a method called compile and it will say compiling with 404 bugs. But now, uh, okay, this is this can be a simple joke, right? Where I say 404 bugs, where you it's not found, bugs not found, maybe. I tried, maybe I failed. Anyway, the point is, uh, I'm trying to print compiling with 404 bugs, and this is what I want to print. And now, since I have a laptop class, since I have a method now, I can, okay, there's, it still shows you an uh, error. Okay, it's there, the he's here. So basically, if I want to call this compile, of course, I need the object of laptop here. So I can simply say laptop, laptop. I got the reference, not the object. And using that reference, I can call this. I can say laptop.compile. Let's say we don't have debug, just to keep it simple, let's go with single method. Of course, you can have multiple methods. So I got the laptop reference and I can call it now. There is no compile time issue. Okay, you can see there is no problem here. But by default, when you talk about the instance variables, so laptop is a variable which is an instance variable. By default, it will get a value which is null. And we don't want it, right? We'll get the same problem which we got earlier. I want to show you that. I want to show you the error which we got earlier. So I will just run this and you will get, waiting for the error. Okay, so you can see we got null point exceptions because is because the laptop is by default null. Uh, let me just put this side by side. So how do we connect this? So one way is you can create the object here. So you can say new uh, laptop, right? And then this will solve the problem is because now you don't have a null there. You got the real object. So if I run this, it, it says working on this awesome project. Also, it says compiling with 404 bugs. So our problem is solved. Basically, it's able to call the laptop. But then this is not what I want. I don't want to say new laptop. And even if you want to say new laptop, there are multiple places you can do that. We don't actually create the object when you define the instance. You basically do that in the constructor of this class of developer or in the setter. Of course, this is a variable, right? So this should be private where you can create a setter method for this and you can do that in the setter if you want to use the new laptop. But anyway, I don't want to use new laptop anywhere. What I want is I want Spring to create this object and then automatically connect it here. So the first thing is what I will do is, so I will talk to Spring Framework by saying, hey Spring Framework, I know you are creating the object for dev. I want you to create object for the laptop as well. But it's not doing that. You know why? Because we forgot to do one thing, which is add component. Now, when you add add component here, now your Spring Framework knows or your Spring Boot knows, hey, dev is not the only class we have to create the object. It's also the laptop. So now Spring Boot will create both the objects. And that's not a big deal. The big deal is how will you connect this to? Now the developer says, I want laptop. How will you connect this? See, one way you can do is you can use the application context. Remember, in the main, basically, we had this application context. And if you can get this in the developer or dev class, you can do that. But I don't want to invoke application context there. I don't want to use that there. So what you can do is you can use certain annotations. One of the annotations we can use here, or you can use one annotation which is called auto wired. Now what this does is it says, see as a developer or as a programmer here in this case, not the programmer or in the example, but someone like me, I'm doing a code now. I want to connect this to, right? 
So basically when you say connect, that basically means wiring. Now since I want this wiring to be done automatically, I can call this as auto wiring. And that's what the, the animation is. When you say auto wired, now your Spring Boot says, okay, I want to get object of dev, but dev is dependent on the laptop. Let me connect this to. So behind the scene, it will connect it. And now you actually got the instance for the laptop. So using this, it will get the object, but using auto wire, it will connect it. And how do we check it? Of course, to check it, we have to run it. So I'll just relaunch this application and you can see we got the same output without the new keyword. So that's the beauty of auto wiring. Okay. And you can do that in multiple places, not just here. And basically when you do it here, it is called a field injection. So when you do that on the top, it is field injection. Remember when we talked about dependency injection, we talked about three different types, field injection, constructor injection, set injection. So when you do it here, that's your field injection. But let's say if you don't want to do that here, what's the other option? You can use a constructor here. So I can say dev and in the constructor, you can pass the object of laptop and you can say laptop is equal to, um, I mean, this dot laptop is equal to laptop. If you're not sure what this line is, uh, go through the video of this keyword on, Java, on YouTube. So search for this keyword in Java and you will know what I've did here. Okay, so now this is how it does the constructor injection. You don't have to use auto wire that, it is optional. So when you run this, uh, this also works. So this is constructor injection. Otherwise, if you don't want to use constructor injection, see if you, if you just uncheck, if you just comment the auto wire and constructor injection, if you try this, you will get the same error which we were getting before. So those things are working, okay? Uh, let me try this setter injection. So what I will do is I will just create a setter method which is public void set laptop and I will say laptop laptop this dot laptop is equal to laptop. Okay, so now I got the setter injection or setter method. Let's try if this works. Now when you do that, it is still giving you an error. So by default setter will not be going for auto wiring. You have to say auto wire here. Now, when you mention auto wire, then it will behave like the way we want. It will do the setter injection. We have not done for the constructor. You can do it, it will not give you error, but even if you skip that, it is by default picking it. So by, for constructor, it is default, it is optional, but for field injection and for setter injection, you have to use auto wire. Which is better, uh, constructor and setter is better, field is not. But you, you will see me using that in the upcoming uh, videos is because I want to keep this simple so that you will understand the project or you will understand uh, how Spring Framework works behind the scene. I want to do one more thing here. So what I will do is I will just go with the auto wiring field injection and let me remove or let me just comment this constructor and setter. Let's only fo focus on the auto wiring here. Now question arise, how exactly is connecting? How do it, how your spring framework knows that when you say auto wire, it will connect with this class object, not some other classes, because in your project, you might be having multiple classes, right? So how it knows that we have to connect with laptop only. So what happens is uh, when you say auto wiring, it goes for by type. It is not searching for name. If you're thinking it's because of this name, no, it's not because of the name. It is because of the type of the class. So since we are saying laptop, it says laptop connected. But the question is what if? you try to apply loose coupling here. What I'm trying to say is, what if you create a interface out of this? So I will say refactor, extract the interface, and let's code for the interface. Because see, in this world, there's nothing called a computer. It is either a laptop or desktop, but both are called as computer. Okay, do we got computer here? Or, I don't know, we just clicked on okay. So we got computer here, and you can see computer is not having any method. So I will say void, compile and this will be declared. Let me just put that down here. I know there are multiple things open here, but yeah, we don't have a choice. You can see on the left hand side, we got dev. Here we got computer and here we got laptop and laptop implements computer. So basically what we are trying to do is we are coding for the interface. Okay, so here we got the interface which has method called compile and laptop implements computer. Now what's the advantage of this? See, one of the advantages when you talk about developers, when you say you want to work on a project, when you join a company, your demand for MacBook, right? And that's the industry standards now. Everyone wants MacBook, but you don't get it. Uh, I'm still waiting for my MacBook. But anyway, the point is, when you join a company, they don't promise you that they will give you a laptop. They promise you that they will give you a computer. This can be a laptop or a desktop. And that's why 
A developer should not be dependent on the laptop. This is hard coding. A developer should be dependent on the not on computer, uh, not on component on the computer. And I will say comp here. And let me replace this with comp. So basically what I'm saying is as a developer, you should focus on dependent on the computer, not on the laptop. And it depends upon the company what they want to provide you. They want to provide you laptop or desktop, that's their choice, right? Now, when you say computer, will this work? Because the add component we are writing on top of laptop, right? But here we are looking for computer. And as I mentioned before, it goes by type. So by type means it will search for the type of computer. And laptop is a type of computer. So if I relaunch it, and you will see it, it works. So basically it is not compulsory that you should use only laptop, you can also use computer, and that's the good practice to use. So we got computer here. But with this, I got one more thought. What if, now since it is searching for computer and you got laptop, that's a good thing, right? But what if there's a confusion? Okay, what confusion I'm talking about? Let me copy this laptop class and paste it here. Of course, it will, we have to change the name of it. So I will say desktop. And now you can see I got a desktop class as well. And there are so many windows open. Let me close computer. Now we know that computer is an interface which has only one method. Let me close it. We got two classes here. One is a desktop and one is a laptop. And both are implementing computer. And the, the method also same, compile and compile is because they're implementing computer. Here I will just write a different thing, compiling with 400, 404 bugs, but faster. And now uh, you can see we got two different implementation, right? Now my question to you, we got two classes. Both are implementing computer, so both are type of computer. Both have component up on top of it. So basically in your container, you will have now three objects, right? So this is for the dev, this is for the laptop, and this is for the desktop. I will say desktop here. So basically I got three objects. And now in the developer, when you say auto wire with computer, which object it will connect with? Laptop or desktop? Confusion, right? It's like you're joining a company and then they are giving you two options and you are confused because on the, on the desktop you will get with the same amount of price, desktop works faster. Uh, plus it is connected to the high power source. Laptop is portable, so you're confused there. And that's what is happening with Spring now. So let me re rerun this and see what Spring says. Okay, so we have not got the error, but we got, I mean, we, have, we got the error, not the red one, but we got the error. The error says application failed to start. Reason, field comp, this one, is uh, in this uh, particular dev class, required a single bean. I mean, of course, right, we want only one object, but two are found. And this is what happens when you are confused between two things. Uh, one is desktop and one is laptop. Which one should I pick for? And it's basically confused. How do we solve this? One of the ways you can delete the desktop class, it will solve the problem. Or you can basically remove the add component on top of desktop. So now what you're doing is you're saying in the container, you've only got one object of laptop. We don't have the object for desktop. So there will not be any confusion there. It will pick up the laptop part. But what if you have a component here and you don't have a component on top of laptop? In this case, it will pick up the uh, desktop and you can see it says faster, so this desktop. But what if both has it? Now that's a problem, right? Now in this case, in case of confusion, you can use certain annotation or one annotation. So, you know, when you have two options, sometimes one thing becomes your preference. Let's say for me, I prefer desktops, but maybe you prefer laptop. So in this case, on top of your laptop, you can use one annotation called primary. So what's the use of primary? In case of confusion, this class will be preferred. And now when you say component on both, but when you run it, it will prefer the laptop. You can see it doesn't say it's faster. So that's laptop. But what if you write primary on both? Not a good idea, but let's say what, let's see what happens. When you say primary on both of both of them, again, there will be confusion, but this time it is giving you different error. But yeah, it says the same thing. It says more than one primary being found among the candidates. So not a good idea, but uh, yeah, this one, one way. You can put a primary on one class. What if you don't want to mention primary? What if you want to say component? Then you can decide in this level. So you can also use something called a qualifier. Now in the qualifier, you can mention the name of your class. So you can mention laptop here. Okay, not the name of the class, but the name of the instance. See, by default, this instance will have some name, or we say bean name. So for the laptop, it will be your class name, but uh, without the capital letter, the first capital letter. So if it is laptop, it will be laptop, but with small l. So that's the name you have to pick up here. Okay, so when you say qualifier, in case of confusion, it will pick up the laptop. 
So now if you run this, we got laptop. You can also do, do it for the desktop and it works. So basically this is how you do auto wiring. So in this video, we have not just talked about the auto wiring, we have talked about primary and qualifier. And we have seen how do we code for the interfaces. Yeah, lengthy video, but I think worth it. So I hope you got some idea behind the scene how auto wiring is working. See you in the next video.